There are some 6-7 owners out there who believe that when it comes to airflow, the head is the limiting factor and the engine can only pump so many CFM. So in their opinion, any improvement to the air intake elbow is worthless. Well, I'm here to tell you it's their head that's a limiting factor, not the Cummins. I think it's time for a fact check. What? Whoa, what are you talking about? That's not true! Try again! As you guys might suspect, I read all your comments. I'd like to reply to all of them, but frankly, I, I, got, I got work to do. But some of them are so outstandingly wrong, I'm afraid it's infecting the pool and I'd like to comment on a few of them. Let me start with the first one here from Anthony. Anthony, regarding the Monster Ram, the bank's Monster Ram, writes, it does nothing. The head is the major restriction. Ah, uh, okay. And then we've got Casey, who appears to be leg humping Anthony. I guess people don't get it. Okay. To which Anthony replies, stock intake horn outflows the stock head. How do these guys know this stuff? Now we've got Benjamin. It does help, probably. Really limiting, not really. Jesus, make up your mind, Benjamin. Then he continues, the stock horn will outflow the stock head. Can make big power on the stock horn. It's just a personal preference. We'll see about that. And my last one here is Travis. The head on a Cummins won't even flow 250 CFM. The stock horn is well over that CFM. So even if you change, the added CFM means nothing. The head can't flow more than the stock horn will allow. Look it up or ask a mechanic. Okay, here's a mechanic right here. First of all, the stock Cummins displaces or pumps 331 CFM at 2,800 RPM, which is the horsepower peak. Check it out, ask a mechanic. What matters here is the air density of each cubic foot of air entering the intake ports. And respectfully, I'd like to teach you how this works. Back in the day, 40 years ago, diesels used in American cars and pickup trucks were not turbocharged. They were naturally aspirated four-stroke engines. And I'd like you to remember this. All four-stroke engines displace their own cylinder volume every two revolutions of the crankshaft. Half the cylinders intake and half the cylinders fire on each rev. So it takes two revs to intake and fire all the cylinders. You performance guys are probably spinning the engine a little faster somewhere in the neighborhood of, let's say, 3,400 RPM, which means the engine would be displacing roughly 400 CFM. So if you're talking CFM, you've got a problem. Let me give it to you very simply. You're inducting 1,200 CFM here, and you're flowing 400 CFM into the engine. What's the difference? What, how can that be? Uh, guys talk about, hey, Gail, you're rating the flow through a cold air system at 1200 CFM, 1000 CFM, wherever, but the engine's only pumping like 400 CFM. What's up there? Well, what's up is the air density changes from here, air inlet, which is your ambient air de density, which is about 72 pounds per thousand cubic feet, to here, where you've compress the air, say three to one, and now you're down to 400 CFM feeding into the intake manifold. The difference is the air density. Rather than use CFM, about 60 years ago, I started using engine mass flow. And then they came out with a MAF sensor, and all automobiles today, most all of them use MAF sensors, to measure the mass airflow, M-A-F. Here's why. So the 1200 CFM is entering here to the compressor on the turbocharger. The compressor on the turbocharger is driven by the turbine 
there's a common shaft in between. The turbine is driven by exhaust gas pressure and temperature. In other words, exhaust energy in the form of exhaust gas temperature and exhaust pressure produced by the piston coming up on the exhaust stroke drive the turbine. The horsepower required to push the exhaust out of the cylinder comes from the crankshaft. It's produced on the combustion stroke. The horsepower produced by the turbine, which is probably here around 40 to 50 horsepower, this thing, the turbocharger, is a density machine. It increases the air density. How does it do that? It compresses the air. When you're compressing the air, you're putting the same air mass that entered the compressor into less cubic feet of air. Now each cubic foot weighs more than it did entering here. The constant here is the air mass flow. How many pounds per minute are we flowing through this stock engine? When the 6.7 came out, the air flow was mid 40s, like 45 pounds per minute through the system and into the cylinders. Now, the later models are like 48 to 52. I just dynoed my 2020 HO, and it was 52.4 pounds per minute at 400 horsepower. That's constant through the entire system. The compressor on the turbocharger increased the pressure, but it heated the air. If we cool the air, we're getting more air density. We want maximum air density leaving the monster ram into the intake manifold on the engine. So we cool it here. The CFM reduces once again, but the air mass is the same. Out of this very low restriction boost tube into the factory throttle, this system is emissions compliant in all 50 states. Oh, by the way, no one else has that. It just doesn't exist elsewhere in the industry. Now we're into the monster ram and into the manifold. Here's the message. There are two devices on this engine that increase air density, the turbocharger and the charge air cooler. Anything in the system that doesn't create air density cuts air density. So we've gone through, in our designs, huge boost tubes, really scienced out manifolds on both ends of a charge air cooler to reduce the pressure loss and give you a great pressure profile across the core as you pu push air in. So you, you use the entire face in and the entire face out. So our designs are radically different than most of the stuff you'll see in the industry. Three and a half inch into the throttle, minimizing density loss all the way through. The density of loss is pretty astronomical with a stock system. So how do I know that? The flow bench. I'm not using the flow bench in a conventional way. I'm using it as an air pump, a variable mass flow air pump. So what I've done here is we've created a, a bell mouth up to our MAF sensor, mass airflow sensor. Out of our mass airflow sensor, I have a boost tube into the throttle, the monster ram, and through our billet plate. So the intake manifold would be right here. We're measuring temperature and pressure, temperature and pressure, and differential pressure through this sensor across the MAF sensor. I want, I want to know the density loss in the MAF sensor. That's just informational. Here we're measuring air density. We know the air density in the room as well. But this, this is the baby right here. This separates the old guard from the future. We've got four iDash data monsters here, and we're logging air density, we're logging math, temperatures, pressures, and all the ambient conditions. We've got an air mouse up there, the little black thing at the end of the wire. That's measuring temperature, pressure, and humidity in the room. And then once we get that beautiful air coming into the ram, we don't want to lose any of it. We want to minimize the density loss here. So we didn't just test a monster ram. We tested everything on the market. 
So how do these guys compare? How do the heater versus billet plates compare when you're measuring mass airflow? On our graph, we're measuring pressure drop in inches of water and mass airflow in pounds per minute. I'll start with showing you test results at 15 inches of pressure drop, 15 inches of water. Here's the stock test. And, th and the first thing I notice, we're clear out to 35 inches of, of water pressure drop, but we're clear off the edge of this before it achieves the 50 pounds per minute of flow. Not good. It's flowing at 15 inches, right at 35 pounds per minute. Next, we go to the shibby. Now understand, we're putting the shibby on the stock heater plate. All of the test re results are with heated cold start capability, including ours. But these elbows are not sold with a billet plate. So the shibby actually, due to that misalignment with the heater grid, reduces flow by three pounds per minute and there we have AFE. Their flow is 36.5 pounds per minute or 5.3% gain. Banks Monster Rim, remember, it has its own integral heater. We're at 60.9 pounds per minute. We're gaining 26.2 pounds per minute airflow at 15 inches, 76% increase in flow. So let's bump it up to 20 inches of water pressure drop and see how they do. Stock goes from 34.7 to 38.6. Shibby goes from 31.7 to 36.5. AFE 41.8 and the Monster Ram 72.7 for an 88.3% gain over stock. You think we did our homework? A lot of guys will go, well, banks, you're cheating. You, You've got this billet plate. So you're hurting the other guys. I'll admit this will hurt anything. So we retested everybody with a billet plate. Now, mind you, there's no heater anymore. There's no cold start air heater anymore, except in ours. So let's look at it. Stock at 15 inches, 35.1 pounds per minute. That's a bit of a gain for the stocker. The Chevy, 39.5 pounds. This is further confirmation. Of if you remove the heater, it actually has an improvement over stock. And then AFE with the plate, 44.4 pounds per minute. And banks, 60.9 pounds per minute. So plate did help them, no question about it. So then how about 20? Shibby 12%, AFE 26%. Banks, 75%. I think we're kicking some ass here. When we did the Monster Ram design, we wanted to diffuse the air, turn it 120 degrees, and put it into the manifold uniformly, pressure and velocity. So how does this thing flow with just the throttle body? Let's have a look. So here's the throttle body. Whoa. 59 pounds per minute, 42% improvement over the stock. So what this says is the Monster Ram is better than nothing at all. It improves the exit conditions from the throttle body into the engine. We're diffusing, we're turning, we did our homework, we did our work on vehicle, and by God, we improve it. But I got curious, can I kick my own ass? How would you do that? So we created a perfect air diffuser put onto the exit from the throttle body. This goes straight to ambient air. This goes through 120 degrees of bend into ambient air. How'd we do? There you got it. Throttle body only with this air diffuser, we still prevailed. And guys, this gets even sweeter if you're running a tune. We flowed all the way to 90 pounds math. Running the stock included is like choking off what you really need for performance. 
it loads up the turbine on the turbocharger, it increases the back pressure on the pistons as they come up on the exhaust stroke. What happens with this? Less exhaust energy, less fuel has to be burned to make the same horsepower, fuel economy. And if you're going for more power, you'll make more power at the same fuel. And one more thing, there's a throttle response advantage, a time to boost advantage, because the turbo shaft speed at any power level is now lower. So when you punch it, you don't come up to this high shaft speed anymore, you come up to a lower shaft speed. So the time to get from when you pedal it to the boost required, and I'm talking about math boost, is shorter. Guys are always commenting, hey, it pedal better. Well, there's why. Our goal was to improve power and efficiency. And I have to say, we knocked it out of the park. But what we didn't realize is that by removing the grid heater, we were also removing a point of failure. And when I say failure, I mean total engine failure. This right here might have cost you a $30,000 engine. Where it came through this intake valve here, all because of the intake heater. So here's the grid heater bowl. As you can see, it's starting to turn sideways. What's holding the post in? So that bolt, um, we did not find the whole bolt. Um, some of it was, was mashed into the piston. Um, the other pieces actually went into the turbo and we took a bore scope and looked in there and it actually, it tore up the turbine wheel on the turbo as well. So now we have the cylinder head off of this, this ram. That's where the heater grid bolt went down the intake runner and in through the valve. That's the bolt head right in the corner of the piston right there. You can see it, you can see it in the picture and it's come, it's scuffed up the side of the cylinder wall a little bit. I was thinking about buying that monster ram part for like the last year and a half, not just for the bolt, but because of the intake flow, it's, it's greater than stock. And, you know, I wish I would have done it in the end because of this bolt and this nut. I mean, it's, it's done. It's, yeah, it's going to be very expensive. So we've shown you how to save your Cummins engine from catastrophic failure by installing our monster ram. And we've increased the air mass pump by the cylinders, even though the head is still flowing exactly the same CFM. I guess the head isn't the limiting factor after all. Fact checked. Whew, I think I need to take a few days off of Facebook.